Yeah, so I started Mashable when I was 19, living in rural Scotland, and uh, I really loved technology, wanted to get into it. Uh, so I started a blog. I started writing about it. People would submit stories to me, and uh, I probably, you know, I probably did that for 18 months before I, you know, I had a million plus uh, monthly uh, unique visitors, and I was able to hire someone. I thought, oh, this will actually be something. But really, I got into it because I was just really fascinated with how technology was going to change the world. It seemed like the revolution that was happening in our time. And uh, you know, over the years, we've we've expanded, and technology has become a horizontal rather than a pure vertical. So we cover entertainment, culture, and technology. We think that all these things are kind of seen through a technology lens now, and we think that really tech is everything. It's touching every part of our lives. Mashable not only covers how technology is changing the world, but we use technology in a big way. Um, probably the primary way we use it is data. So starting about 2011, uh, we launched this platform called Velocity, which originally was about all our editors would be going on TweetDeck and the social networks every day and saying, what's happening? You know, what are people talking about? What's going to be the next big topic? So what we did was built the system that predict, would take in Twitter firehose, Facebook firehose, and say, what's going to be big next? And look at the curves and, and use data science to figure out, to predict what would happen. So we got to a level of 83% accuracy of knowing when a share count will double. So we have all our editors sit with dashboards that say, this one's going to be huge, this one not so big, this one's already been covered, it's already peaked, don't bother. Um, and then we built a, a kind of uh, entity abstraction on top of that. So saying, you know, all these stories are about this particular, to all these stories are about unicorn frappuccinos. And unicorn frappuccinos peaked on Sunday and don't cover them because it's Monday and find something else. What we did after that was we said, huh, now that we can do this quick turn stuff, we're suddenly having to produce video and branded content. So brands want us to make a whole series. It's not going to run till the summer. What's going to hit with my target demo? So we then put this layer over that. For the past three years, we can dig in and say, OK, luxury car buyers, what have they been most interested in? What are the topics? Who are their influencers? Uh, what could we create that's highly likely to hit with that demographic? And then we said, OK, when we make it, let's bake that into the CMS, the tool we make to, to actually create the content. So we will test out different headlines, test out different thumbnails, and also uh, when we create videos, push out we can put out different versions to YouTube and Facebook, et cetera, and then get all the data back in one place. And the last thing that we do, which uh, we've really developed over the last year, is around, it's called Velocity Kilogram. It's about how do we find the right people for each piece of content. So whenever someone comes to Mashable and shares something, we kind of uh, segment them as how influential uh, is that person and which group of people and which topic. So is this someone, is this someone that's a late night uh, uh, comedy fan, maybe you watched a carpool karaoke, we say, OK, when you actually shared this, you brought back 10 people. So you're super important. So we're going to put you in this grouping of people. And next time we have a late night comedy video, we're going to make sure you see it when you come to the site. And we're also going to make sure that you're more likely to see it when you visit other sites or when you visit your social networks uh, so that we can really kind of all the way from start to finish make content that you want to see and then make sure that the right people see it afterwards. And we've just seen huge success with targeting people with the right stuff that they want to see at the right time. So that's really how we use tech as not just like we cover it, but it's, it's baked into everything we do. And, and it speaks to some of the stuff we're, we're uh, talking about here at NAB is, is all about why well, do we produce TV differently? You know, there's a bunch of people who can create half-hour shows. There's a whole, you know, people have spent their lives doing that. They can do them much better than us. They're, they're in that industry. But what we think about is, how can we reach the right people? How can we use data before we make the show to say, huh, maybe you know, this world is not about making a mass show that everyone kind of is OK with but nobody loves. We're not trying to make um, uh, a show for everyone. We're trying to make it for a specific audience. So how can we find that audience? How can we find what they really, really want to consume, What's not being, uh, what need isn't being satisfied? And then once we've made it, how do we make sure it actually reaches them? That they've got all this clutter out there, and this, this piece of content is going to find them, and they're going to want to engage with it. So that's how we make uh, television content differently or, or video content differently. And then you know, more and more, we think about what's the future. And it's probably that device that, that you're holding in your hand and that we all have in our pockets is the phone. It's probably the future of video consumption. So we spend a lot of time thinking about 
how do we tell stories there? What platforms should they be on? Uh, we produce for Snapchat and Facebook and YouTube and all the apps that you're, you're opening on a daily basis. So we think there is going to be a sweet spot of people kind of consuming video content through their existing apps uh, and that content becoming more premium over time. I mean, I think there is, um, in the branded content realm, you know, there is a lot of uh, desire to create stuff that does meet a certain audience and to de-risk it over time. And certainly we use data to do that to make sure there is an audience for this before we make it. Video is expensive. But I don't think everything needs to be that. I think for us, we say it's the art and science. So, you know, if you only use data, you'd only make zombie TV shows, you know? And, people are going to have their fill of those. And, and so you have to also have great creative people with novel ideas and sometimes take a risk on something where you're like, don't know if this is going to work, but it just feels like emotionally like this is something really compelling that I'd want to watch. And we can find the audience after. You know, we can just use the latter half of it and say, you know what, this is a great idea. We're going to go find the people who are super fans of that. Um, we call them supermans, you know, those people who really influence the, the spread of things. We think the same people who line up for an iPhone or Snapchat spectacles are the same people that will talk about Game of Thrones or Westworld or Stranger Things. So we see a huge overlap in those audiences, and we really cater to super fans of entertainment franchises. I think, um, well, I think that happens at all, all creative organizations. I think for us, it's, it's both. Um, I think you certainly want to be open to a great idea. Um, and I think all organizations uh, kind of that, that are creative have both those halves of their brain. And I think, um, you know, I think as a creator, you want your stuff to be seen. So, so I don't think that something like Kilogram is something that, that you'd be at all opposed to is, oh, I can find the fans of this, they're going to make it the next hit, and they're going to spread it, and going to make it something that has social currency and that is a, has a cult following. Uh, I think everyone wants that. But I, I do think at the idea stage, you have to be open to, oh, we don't really have that much data to support this idea, but we're going to give it a go. I mean, the data story is really, you know, what we talk about, and, and the, the reason we're here is we're doing a lot of, um, you know, we're all aiming at this, whatever is the future of television. And we think it's, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, you're going to make linear shows. And yes, we'll probably make some linear shows, some shows that you'll see on your big screen in your house. But I think um, we're all aiming at something that is, how's it going to be consumed on this device? So we've been doing a lot of partnerships with existing networks. We have a deal with uh, Bravo, where we've made four series with them uh, that run digitally. Uh, the first one was called uh, Real House Kids. So it was Real House Kids Reenact Real Housewives. It was one of the most popular digital series ever. We just did another one with them called Love You, which is the science of love and uh, a doctor explaining, you know, when you fall in love, kind of, you know, taking the romance out of it a little bit, a little bit more mashable tech kind of approach of what's actually going on and what's the science of all this stuff. Um, I think we now have actually five, five series that, that we're doing with them. Add an additional one. We have a deal with uh, Nat Geo. We're producing uh, two series with them. Uh, and they're going to come out pretty soon. They just announced that they're uh, up front uh, this past week, uh, that we're part of their further network, which is going to be producing branded content together. We'll distribute some of it on Mashable platforms when they make branded. Uh, so we have a lot of these partnerships we're working on with um, uh, with traditional television, all trying to figure out uh, what is the future of all this stuff and what are we going to make together and will that run digitally, will it run linearly. So uh, that's what we're really excited about is these collaborations. Uh, we're producing for OTT, we're producing for the Go 90s of the world. These intersections of existing linear television broadcast cable and this whole new world of OTT. And we think what we can do there is bring the data and bring the distribution and say, hey, you have this great IP in the uh, cable ecosystem or on broadcast. We're going to bring it to digital. And we're going to use data and we're going to find you the audience. And we're actually going to extend your linear audience to digital. But also together, and this is some of the stuff we're doing with uh, Bravo, is uh, we're going to create new IP. We're going to create whole new shows and ideas. And maybe eventually, if they're successful in digital, they'll carry back to linear. Uh, so it kind of goes in, in both directions there. Uh, so that's what we're excited about in the TV ecosystem. And 
probably the other thing that we're pretty we find pretty compelling is we're uh, we're having a lot of success with Snapchat. We're a big fan of that. We think that when you look at the uh, the Discover uh, section on Snapchat, you look at all those channels lined up. That's a lot like maybe a future cable ecosystem where you have 40 or so channels. It's all the millennial brands. Uh, and I think for that generation, kind of tapping a Mashable logo and watching uh, a Discover edition or a show is kind of equivalent of turning on your TV and going through your channel guide. So pretty excited about how apps are going to kind of create their own cable ecosystem with premium brands. And the more places where Mashable can be premium and create stuff exclusively for that platform, then the more resources we can put into it. You know, we're not just putting our stuff everywhere now. It's about, huh, could we work with this platform to make something that's completely custom to them so that it feels like a great experience and it feels like something that's premium and differentiated, something that our advertisers are going to want to align with, but also something that viewers are going to feel like, oh, this is something special. I'm going to take time to view this whole thing. So we're pretty excited about some of our platform partnerships as well.